What is up, MF? Hope you guys are having an amazing freaking day. As you guys saw about a month, month and a half, I don't even know when it was, about a month and a half ago, I went out and purchased this new sexy, beautiful Black Beast, and I, I have still not decided on a name for it. It's down to two. We got Black Betty, and we got the Black Mamba. I'm a huge Kobe fan, so uh, Black Mamba is kind of near and dear to my heart. That's what some of you MFers decided. Um, but Black Betty also, very, very nice ring to it. Anyways, as you guys saw from the title and the thumbnail of this video, we are going to be doing a little bit of a boat tour. So many people have been requesting this video, a tour of my brand new Phoenix 721 boat. And so we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna tell you guys some of the things I like, some of the things I really don't like about the boat. Uh, this is my dream boat, and I've had a chance to use it a little bit. That's why I decided to kind of wait a little bit before I uh, put this video out. But let's go through everything. I'll tell you guys what I want changed. Um, if, you're in the, if you're in the market for a new boat, if you have the chance to get out and uh, design, pretty much I, I handpicked everything on this boat, then hopefully this will help you guys out. And if you just want to see what's in this badass boat, and maybe some of my secret lures, secret rods and stuff we got coming out, then you'll want to stick around. we got some good stuff coming. Let's, let's take a look inside. All right, let's start at the front of the boat. Had to take a quick little nap, been on the damn water, getting my teeth kicked in by the Bastosaurs all day. Let's start up here though, and I'm gonna tell you guys one of my favorite things about it. And this is my favorite thing about my old boat too, um, so it's not really anything new. It's trolling motor, Minn Kota Ultrex. This is the 112 volt thrust, 36, 112, 112 pound thrust, not volt. 36 volt system, it's the shorter shaft. This time I had the longer one before for some deeper, some bigger water and stuff. And, and, and that might be something that comes back to bite me if I'm fishing some big water. But I love this thing. It's got spot lock on it. It's got north heading. So if you're going forward, you can just spin the blade, put the north, push the north heading button and it'll just go and you can tie a bait on or whatever you need to. It's really, really awesome though. Um, next thing up, obviously, we'll kind of get back there in a moment, but these two buttons right here are for the power poles. So, you know, my favorite saying and one of the favorite sayings of us MFers is we drop the poles whenever we have a damn good spot. You know, whenever we catch at least one six inch bass, we have to drop poles because we're about to catch more maybe. That controls those back there. So it's super good to have these up front. Also have my remote, which I've handily left in the, the truck the entire trip to Gunnersville here because um, I'm not smart. Anyways, that's where we're at with that. Also, this guy right here got the old Humminbird Helix 10. I got a 10 there. 10 at the console. Um, decided to go with Humminbirds for this boat. I wasn't very familiar with them. I had them on my first boat, but it was way back when. And then I had a little rants forever. So I'm kind of switching up, getting used to the controls and everything. And I, met, I made a mistake when I ordered the Helix. There's a Solix, the Onyx, and the Helix. They all sound like a bunch of Ixes to me, and I didn't really take the time to look into it. I figured it would be badass. It's a good unit, and I really got it because I like the uh, the the mega imaging um, for the side imaging and I like the mapping on it too. Really like the Lake Master, but one big problem is it's not touchscreen. And so everything you do is through this dial right here. So you see something over the side on side scan, you can't just touch it, type in what it is. You can't say, you know, brush pile, um, drop off, hump, grass line, stuff like that. You can go back in and edit it, but it just takes way, way longer without the touchscreen. So that's one thing I would definitely change about this boat if I could. That was my mistake, to be honest. Unit works great. If you want a Helix, um, just know that it does not have touchscreen. All right, moving back here. This is where the magic happens. These are the giant storage boxes. And, and one reason I really like the Phoenix boats, I like how they're laid out. It's simple, but everything's really big. 721 used to be a little bit narrower than the 9 series, but now uh, since 2017, I believe, they've widened it a bunch. So it's only a few inches narrower than the 9 series um, and, and actually quite a bit cheaper too. So definitely don't have any complaints with the 721. So these guys right here are rod lockers. This one right here, we'll hop in him first. It's pretty exciting, but uh, basically I think I got like 18 or 20 rods in there and it's pretty maxed out with that many rods. I don't think that many people carry more rods than like 18 or 20. Um, but yeah, they, they fit in there super nice. There's rod tubes down there. I got them all in my six cents rod sleeves. We got some secret baits and stuff in there, so we can't show the camera too much in there. Um, there we go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the rod locker. Um, here's another thing I'll, I'll show you guys real quick too. We'll, we'll look at it on this one. This is how the latches work on all of them. Basically they lock down. You gotta turn them to open them. They won't open up like that. Um, they all have locks on them. Really, really like that. So you turn it, you open. I like it a lot. Hey, look at this one. This has got a whole bunch in it. Actually, it's completely empty. Not very exciting, but I can could, I could literally fit in there. I've gotten in there once before. It's getting a little warm out today, so I'm not gonna get in there. 
But yeah, I don't even know what I'm gonna put in there yet. Maybe put Max in there if we need to ride down the lake really quick and it's raining or something. Uh, tornado shelter, maybe I'll put like a mini fridge, beer cooler, I don't know. I'm gonna put something big in there though, obviously there's a lot of space. So my last boat, that right there was where I put all my soft plastics and everything. And if you guys know anything about soft plastics and, and have a whole bunch of them, you know, they're really, really heavy. So it's not necessarily best to have them in the front. So this is kind of a 1.0 version of how my boat is set up. Um, maybe when we get to 2.0, we'll get some of the heavier stuff and move to the back compartments. I'll show you those in a second. But for now, we have this super unorganized mess of my soft plastics, um, some of them. These are the ones that are in bags and as I showed you guys, I, I arranged them by, these are all my worms. But look at that, terrible Ziploc shittiness. Even the Bass Mafia bags that are a little bit better have all fallen apart on me, so I need to figure out a better way to do that. This is all Six Sense prototypes. You guys can't see any of those. And um, basically just a bunch of loose shit in there. That's a big unorganized mess that I'll have to get figured out when I get home. In here, this is the big main compartment. Um, once again, kind of a mess. Um, not too bad though, but I, I love how many boxes you can get in here and I really like these zip cord guys. Those hold your boxes down, hold whatever in there down that you need to while you run around. We did a lot of running around today and uh, beat, up, beat up the boat about as hard as we could and everything is still pretty much in order. I like this right here, this is just kind of a day bag like I was telling you guys about in my tackle organization video. I like to throw all my stuff that I'm probably going to be using for each specific lake in a bag like this. Leave it right there with all my uh, my hard baits and everything. But pow. Also, I, I don't know, I'd say you can probably fit like 15, 15 or so regular size Plano boxes in this center compartment along with, you know, we got some little ones mixed in here. We got random swimming baits mixed in here. We got all sorts of random stuff in here, but uh, that's how I arrange all my stuff up there. Moving on to the most, one of the most important parts of this boat, of course, the cooler. We gotta have somewhere to store our natties. Um, unfortunately, we must have drank them all. We don't have any in there. Love the cooler in this guy. I mean, it's a freaking cooler. It's not too exciting, but pretty deep. You could probably fit about 40 or so natties in there. I mean, that's good enough for like a Tuesday morning. So plenty for that anyway. And then over here, really like these two storage compartments. These are two of my favorite things about the Phoenix boat. This thing I feel like Phoenix boats in general laid out more for fishermen than any other boat there is. Um, but we got a couple day boxes, so we can basically put whatever we want in here. And so as you guys can see, these come out too, which is cool. I got all my baits that I've been throwing. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't have a bunch of stuff laying in the bottom of the boat. Just throw it in this guy and organize it, you know, all the time. After every trip, okay, once a year or so, we organize all our baits and take them out of there and put them back in the boxes. I've got my scent in here. Um, only one right now, but got my scents in there. You want those separate. Um, right down here is another awesome feature of Phoenix Boats. They have it right here, and then they got a couple right here and right there as well in that console. Um, places to store your tools. My stuff is constantly lost, missing. Don't know where the damn pliers are. If you're like me and unorganized, that's an awesome thing. Um, next thing up, my co-anglers are probably really going to appreciate this. So we got this whole compartment right here. We got rod holders and everything. You can put eight foot rods in this which I didn't mention, but I can easily fit my eight foot rods in my rod locker as well. I got like seven, eight foot rods in there. So plenty, plenty long. Um, I think this holds probably, it's got four little tubes in there. So at least four rods, put those there. The ones you put on top, seat belt them in with this dude. And then we got some, we got these. What we need today is some oh shit handles, just like you got in your cars. Oh shit handles in the boat, definitely a must. All right, moving back, center console. This is one of my favorite things about the Phoenix boats as well. Love, love, love these. Awesome cup holders in there, tool holders. Everything's facing backwards, of course, with the opening. And then in there, I've got like my, uh, my fire extinguisher, which is still new in the box. Somehow I haven't destroyed the boat yet. That's why I had to do this tour before a couple months from now, because I'll probably explode this thing, burn it to the ground, get by a semi, something. I'm really hard on my stuff, so yeah, shit's everywhere. But this is, again, just basic tools and stuff I keep in there. It's kind of a mess, but keep it nice and unorganized. Hmm. Oh, check out this super freaking cool feature. You guys are like me, you're always tangled and, and dicking around with the net, trying to figure out where to put it. Well, this is a feature I don't think I've seen any other boats. The net goes under here. It's magic. Woo! 
All right, so for the console, this is a, I like the Phoenix look because it's really, really clean. I've seen others that have a lot more dials, a lot more buttons and stuff, but that's not necessarily a good thing for simple-minded folk like myself. So this is a really cool mounting system. They actually made it so it's a dual shroud, they said, so you can mount um, one side by side. Super clean up here. There's nothing that's gonna block your view or anything. I like how this guy's nice and low too on the windshield. It kind of sucks when you're going down the, the water like 75 miles an hour. Um, and it's raining or something, but for all other times when you need to be able to see, I can easily see right over that. And that's not that way in a lot of different boats. Seats are super, super comfortable, obviously. Um, hot pedal foot is super nice, especially when the water's rough. You can keep both hands on the steering wheel, which is very, very important. Um, and then this is a nice, this is the panel right here. All the switches, like I said, super easy. Just got your power, bilge, aerators, recirculate, um, lights courtesy lights, navigation lights, everything's labeled really, really well. Uh, and it's super, super smooth. Okay, that's the horn, beady. And then this over here, this is kind of nice too. I like having this little, uh, it's like a little day box thing right there. So baits end up down there that I end up using. Nothing too exciting there. But uh, yeah, let's move back a little bit. Hey, let's move on to the live wells. These are live wells, they're separate. I don't know, they, uh, they're nice, they hold water and keep fish alive. So far, I haven't fished any tournaments, but I have put fish in here. They're very large. Um, they don't leak. They're very clean. Like them a lot. Back here, another storage compartment. Look at that. I got a freaking tackle shop in my boat, and we have another empty fiberglass compartment. I uh, really like them, though. Drains in them, everything. Super nice. Um, moving back to the other side. It's a hair more exciting. I keep my... I got a six this bag from six cents this thing's badass keep my line all in this drawstring bag um got my spinner baits and deep crank baits and like five or six more bags of or bags boxes of soft plastics this will probably hold like 10 uh regular size plano boxes in here so plenty of room in there plus i got my line in there and everything little moss compartment the old back guy and this has a feature in it i really like as well which is these trays. These trays are badass. You take them out, put them in there. You can keep your tow rope, your jumper cables, um, everything else in there, your, your, your spikes for your, your engine, everything. But uh, yeah, that keeps everything clean. Before I had my, my jumper cables just like down in the bottom, sitting in the water and everything else down there. It sucked balls, but uh, yeah, this is insanely clean. Obviously it's a new boat, so it's gonna be clean, but I think it's gonna stay clean really easy. Has four batteries back here, so four full size, 12 volt batteries. Luckily, yep, they are strapped in very, very tightly because today they would have been bouncing around a whole bunch if they weren't. Ugh. Okay, back here, um, two power pole blades, eight footers. They're power poles, you drop the poles whenever you catch a six inch bass. Um, yeah, they're, they're badass though. It's the first boat I've ever had with poles on them. Hooks to the jack plate right back there. Control with the hand remote, control with the foot pedals up there. Nothing too crazy. You guys know what power poles do. But this right here, I think it's still warm from a little bit ago. I freaking love this thing. It sounds like a damn muscle car. The whole shot on this, this new four stroke is unbelievable. I've never had any whole shot like this before. We had three big dudes in the boat today and uh, jumps right out of the hole still. <laughs> Cameraman's flipping me off. All right. Moving on, uh, that's that's probably about it actually. Um, that's my new boat, to be honest. Um, I like everything, a, a whole bunch of stuff about it. There's a couple things that I've changed, like getting different graphs on it. Luckily, that's something we can change and I think we're gonna change. But um, another thing I don't like, I don't know how this boat is freaking over 60 grand, $60,000 plus boat. And I, I've always been to the point where I'm like, I don't, I don't tell anybody they need to have a super expensive boat to catch fish. This was like a necessary purchase for me because I fish every single day and I needed it for the reliability. And so I could go 78 miles an hour on Gunnersville, of course, um, which wasn't necessary at all. But uh, yeah, it, this is my office. It's where I fish every day. So I think a lot of people saw this and were like, whoa, big, big fancy guy now. And yeah, this is a beautiful fancy boat. I don't know how I put myself in a position to get this boat, but it's definitely, it's necessary for me to have nice things. But on the same note, um, and something that's a totally opposite opinion, I think it's ridiculous that every boat in the industry, brand new boats, are like for a full size, 50 grand plus. There's no way 
that a boat should cost is like half as much as a decent house these days. I don't know, it's, it's ridiculous. I've seen them up to a hundred grand, but um, that's my opinion on that. I guess we'll kind of see where it goes with the industry. A lot of it's because of this guy right here. We're charging 25, 30 grand for engines now. I don't know, until, until supply gets a little bit better and Johnny Morris stops buying them all so people can actually put them on their own boat. I don't know where that's gonna go, but we'll see, hopefully that's something we can work for in the future. Hope maybe we'll start a damn MF or boat company. Sell this guy for 20 grand. No, that probably won't happen. Maybe in the future though. It's something we've talked about, so we will see on that. But hopefully you guys like my boat tour, like my boat video. I would strongly recommend a Phoenix 721. Um, probably won't hear me talk a whole lot about what the brand and model is moving forward. If you guys got any questions though, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are thinking and uh, of course comment what you'd like me to name it as well. But thank you so much for watching. This one I'll catch you guys very soon. Out of here. Peace.